Hi everybody, in this video we will continue discussing accounting for receivable. Today or in this uh, video we will discuss how companies value accounts receivable and record their disposition. Before that, in previous videos, we discussed how we recognize accounts receivable and then we discussed how we value accounts receivable, how we recognize the amount of doubtful account or bad debt account we discuss two approach or two methods direct write-off and allowance for doubtful account in this video we will continue to discuss learning objective number two the point that we are going to discuss how we calculate the amount of doubtful account previously we discussed how we record doubted amount by right of method or allowance for the allowance for doubtful uh, method but the point here how we calculate the amount itself let us see this by uh, example actually to recognize the amount of doubtful account we have two approach we can uh, calculate as uh, calculate it as a percentage of the outstanding receivable itself or we can calculate it as a percentage of sales now the point or the question is which uh, what's the uh, more uh, preferable method the po uh, or the more preferred method the point is depends on the experience of uh, the company itself so uh, you will see many many companies use percentage of the outstanding receivables and many many companies use a percentage of sales now let us go to see how we calculate it as a percentage of the outstanding receipt first of all you have to prepare accounts receivable aging schedule you can use whatever you want or what's the approach or how you calculate the percentage it depends on the uh, organization itself for example may someone have uh, 1 million as accounts receivable in total so he can calculate as a, as a percentage for example 500 percent so in total we are talking about 50,000 or may you aging it like this uh, number of days passed due here this column not yet due here due or passed by 1 to 30 days here 30 to 60 days here 61 to 90 over 90 he categorize or classify the amount due from uh, their customer by number of days positive so according to their experience of a previous period amount not yet due doubted by 200 percent so amount not yet due in total 20 27,000 doubted by 200 so the amount we expected not to collect or uncollectable amount 540 from this part here expected uncollectable amount the amount days past due around 1 to 30 days is 400 percent so in total due amount 5700 by 400 percent so expected uncollectable amount 228 here the same thing uh, number of days past due from 31 to 60 days in total 3000 that if you if you look at the percentage it will be increased when the number of days past due uh, increased here when uh, the past due is uh, 30 to 60 the percentage is uh, 10 percent so expected uncollectable amount of 300 and for 6190 same thing so in total doubtful account 2228 we calculated it as a percentage of uh, an outstanding receivable also you can calculate it as a percentage of sales but the point is uh, uh, you have to figure out this amount or oh, actually it will not be the same uh, as i mentioned minute ago it will be according to the experience of the company you have to determine it or uh, as accountant or a financial manager whatever they have to make decision according to their experience now we have doubted in total 2220 let us see how, what's the accounting treatment for this amount let us see this example assume the adjusted trial balance shows allowance for doubtful account with a credit balance of 520 already we have balanced by 528 okay 
uh, they told us that allowance for doubtful account with the credit balance. Actually, the normal balance of doubtful account is a credit. Prepare the adjusting entry, assuming 2,228, the amount just we have calculated, is the estimated of uncollectable receivables from the aging schedule. From the aging schedule, uncollectable amount in total 2220 but already we have recorded 528 from a previous period the previous month whatever it uh, or the source of it or the day of recording so the point is we will record only the additional amount in total doubtful account 2228 already we recorded 528 so we will record the difference is 1700 the difference between 2228 in total amount on total or total doubtful account already recorded 528 so we will record the difference but did expense to on or on a credit side allowance for doubtful account 1700 so it will be like this but did for the uh, current period 1700 but did expense Allowance already recorded by or credited by 528, we add 1,700. So in total, the balance of allowance for doubtful account that we will show it in the financial position is 2,228. How we will show it? We will show the balance of accounts receivable. We don't have it here. I think we have. In total, 39,600 accounts receivable, and contra account will be credited by 2,228. So, you have to figure out the net accounts receivable or net receivable accounts receivable. Let us see the next example. Assume now the adjusted trial balance shows allowance for doubtful account with what? Be careful with debit balance of 500. This is something different. Here we have debit balance. How you think, how can the allowance for doubtful account be debited? This is a good question. You have to think it. I will not answer it in this week. I prepare the adjusting entry, assuming 2,228 is the estimate of uncollectable receivables from the aging schedule. In total, doubtful account 2,228. But we have debit balance of doubtful account by 500. So what's the entry? The entry will be like this. First of all, you have to cancel debit balance. And then you have to add total 2,228. So in total, that debt expense will be 2,728. Why? To cancel debited 500 and then record the additional debited amount 2228 be careful the difference between this one or this example and the previous one here the balance is a credit the balance here is a credit but the balance in the coming example here is debit this is the difference between this one and previous so, but it will be the bad expense will be debited by 2728 and allowance for doubtful account 2728. The point keep in your mind how could allowance for doubtful account be debited? This is so important. Question. So, here let us show the account but the expense will be debited by uh, post this uh, entry will be debited by 2728. Allowance for doubtful account before this, uh, or first of all, it was debited by uh, 500 here, credited by 2728. So the balance will be credited by 2228. Okay, this is the first point of this chapter. Let us go to the end of learning objective number two. The point is disposition of accounts receivable. Disposing of accounts receivable. Here in previous example that we discussed before, how we record accounts receivable. Then how we value accounts receivable. After that, we learn together how we 
calculate or how we recognize the amount of uncollectable amount and how we present the accounts. Now, at any time of period, may we need cash. So, the point that we are going to discuss how we sell accounts receivable. This is the meaning of disposing of accounts receivable, release accounts receivable, sell accounts receivable. But before discuss the accounting treatment of disposing of accounts receivable, the question is why we need dispose accounts receivable? Why we need to sell it? Because we need cash. Receivable may be the only reasonable reasonable source of cash. We need it. And the point, and additional point is collecting cash is costly process and time consuming uh, process. We need to spend time. We need to spend money to collect cash. For that, to save our money, to say or to minimize the cost and to save our money, we sell the accounts receivable to receivable to factor or finance company or bank. They are specialized to collect the amount from companies or individuals. So sale of receivable to factor such as finance uh, company or bank buys receivable from business and then collect payment directly from the customer. They will collect the amount from our customer. To do that, they will get charge to uh, to do this service this is charge may be something or commission something around two percent one hundred percent whatever what the amount or the percentage you agree to pay they will you will uh, adopt it or you will apply it let us see some numerical example assume that hundred uh, hindered on furniture factor six hundred thousand dollar of receivables to federal factors. Federal factory assess a service charge of 200% to give us the cash and to take this mission to collect cash from our customer, they will take 200% of the amount of receivable source. Amount of receivable 600,000. We will sell this amount in total to federal factors they will take the mission to collect the cash to do that they will take the they will take a commission to do this uh, service so the journal entry to record the sale by hindered on furniture is as follows think what we have to do now accounts receivable due from the customer 600 we will sell the amount in total for someone else this one will collect it so he will pay us the amount minus 200 percent as service commission so the entry will be like the following cash will we receive from the factor that we sold him accounts receivable to collect himself 588 how we calculate it in total the amount 600 they charge us by 200%, 200% multiplied by 600,000, in total 12,000. So they will pay us 588,000, and we sold them the accounts receivable in total 600. So the 1,200, the difference between collected amount from the factor and the amount due from the customer, we will go as service charge expense. It's expense we will or we paid it according to our uh, complaint to what to or against what sorry against the collection services that we provided by the federal factor so they will go to our customer and collect from them six hundred thousand this is the point also uh, uh, in the same line disposing of accounts receivable this is the uh, this uh, thing is similar to national credit card as you know may you go to any supermarket and pay uh, them by uh, credit card also the credit card company will deduct uh, a percentage of commission from the retailer who sold you uh, the goods let us see this example. Anita Ferreri purchases 1,000 of compact disc 
for her restaurant from Karen Music Company using her, her Visa First Bank card. First Bank charge service fee of 300%. The entry to record this transaction by Karen Karen Music is as follows. Cash collected from credit card company 970. They will take 300% as a service charge. So in total, sales amount 1000, but we will not receive 1000. We will receive 1000 minus service charge that write off or deducted by the companies of uh, credit or by credit card company. So we will receive 970. Here also, any company, uh, any supermarket use a credit card machine, he will deduct from account 1000 dollar for example but he will not receive one thousand dollar the bank will deduct his service charge expense until now it's enough see you in the coming video that we will discuss explain how companies recognize value and dispose of notes see you